In this video, you'll learn how to troubleshoot and find an overcurrent issue in your field wiring when connected to a baseline controller. Overcurrent messages on the Base Station 1000 or the Base Station 3200 are slightly different, but will show when there is an excessive draw of power caused by a device, a splice, or a section of wire. These issues can damage the controller, so they must be resolved before irrigating again. The controller will count down before checking the wire path again, in the chance that it was a temporary issue. Before we get to any testing or meter work, stop and disconnect any loops that you might have in your wire path. We're working on testing in a particular direction, and loop wire will make that difficult, if not impossible, to do this testing. First, disconnect the power to the controller. It's always a good idea to disconnect the power if you have an unresolved overcurrent issue, or if you're working on a wire inside the controller. There are several ways to disconnect the power to the controller. Shut off the circuit breaker, disconnect the power supply, or remove the orange plug that connects the transformer to the board. That's what I've done today. Something to note, this is my office test controller and I don't have a wire path that meets baseline specifications. While it works for training purposes, please check the baselinesystems.com website for our wire and splice specifications. So with the power off, I'll take a screwdriver and disconnect one of the legs of wire. By disconnecting just one section of the wire path, I can reduce my efforts and focus my search. With only one leg of wire attached, we see that the problem is still there, and there's no need to test that disconnected section of wire. The issue could be on the second section of wire, or it could be on the controller itself. We need to rule out the controller, so I'm going to disconnect the second leg of wire. Like before, Disconnect the power supply, remove the second leg of wire, and power it back up to see if the problem goes away. Since the issue did not return with no wire connected and just the controller alone, that tells me the problem is certainly in the wire path, specifically on that second leg of the wire. I'm going to reconnect that second leg of the wire path, but only the black side for right now. Next, I'll take a known good solenoid and connect it to the red side of the wire path using a wire nut, and then I'll connect the other side of the solenoid to the two-wire board. Essentially, I've spliced the solenoid into the red side of the two-wire path inside the controller cabinet. By connecting in a solenoid, we can use the controller to help us locate the overcurrent issue. There's no need to have a dedicated external transformer, and that's super convenient. With the controller powered back up, notice that the overcurrent message didn't show up, but that doesn't mean the problem's been fixed. Now turn the dial to the advanced dial position and open the two wire settings menu. Anytime we're working on two wire issues, we need to make sure that the two wire path is always on. The base station 3200 two wire path is not always energized, only when it's actually running. You may hear the solenoid click or buzz, and you can actually feel that it's activating. That means the wire path is energized. The tool we're going to use is a milliamp clamp meter, which is an amp clamp that has the ability to see 1 milliamp or 0 0.001 amps. If you use a standard amp clamp, you won't have that resolution to see the small numbers we're going to be tracking down. The most important thing about a milliamp clamp and solenoid process is that it allows us to do non-invasive testing. I don't need to break any splices until I found my bad device. I'm going to turn the meter to measure AC amps and then clamp around the red side of the wire. Right now I'm getting a reading of 0.74 amps or 274 milliamps and that's my benchmark number. I'm going to use that as a reference when I go out to the wire path. I've transitioned outside to my wire path mock-up. There are only six devices connected to my small training controller and the wire doesn't meet specifications but you certainly get the idea of what we're trying to do here. The controller's already in an overcurrent state. That means there's a potential issue either on the wire path or in the controller. To resolve that, I'll disconnect the two wire path and give the controller some time to complete its test cycle. I'm quite confident that the problem is in my two wire path. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna connect the solenoid to the red side of the two wire path. With the wire path and solenoid connected back to the controller, I'll use my milliamp clamp around the red wire closest to the controller and get a benchmark reading. That reading for this system is 147 milliamps. Remember that number for the next clamp test we do. It's worth mentioning that the actual reading or the actual number isn't important. Inside my office, we had a different reading. Generally, devices pull very low amperages, sometimes so small that the meter can't even read them. We're going to be chasing a big amperage draw down the wire path. Follow that big number and you can find the culprit.
whether it's a device, a splice, or a section of wire. At the three-way splice to my first device, I'll clamp around the incoming red wire and see I have 147 milliamps. And the red wire going out of the splice, I still have 147 milliamps. I have high amperage draw going into the splice and high amperage draw going out of the splice. So this tells me that the problem is further down the wire path. And if I were to clamp around just the red wire to the device, it'll read zero. It's such a low draw that the meter can't see it. Remember, we're chasing a big number down the wire path, so a zero or a tiny number is a good thing. At the second device, the red lead going into the splice reads 147 milliamps, and the red lead out of the splice reads 146 milliamps. The big number tells us that our problem is still further down the wire path. Did you notice that the reading changed just a little bit? On real-world large systems, that number will vary even more. It's those big number changes that tell us where to go, not the little changes. At this next three-way splice, there's no devices here, but I still want to test it. It's high going in, 146 milliamps, and it's high going out, 146 milliamps. We've just cleared that leg of wire that goes off to the left. What's really nice about this method is because it's high going in and high going out, we know the problem's downstream. There's no reason to go down that leg of wire and all of those devices on this branch of the wire path are okay. It could be a section of wire two feet long or a section 2,000 feet long with 100 devices on it. Once I've cleared that leg, ignore it and move on. At this next three-way splice, I'm measuring 145 milliamps in, zero milliamps out to the left, and 145 milliamps going up. That's where I want to go next, straight up towards the big reading. Checking the splice of the device shows that the bicoder is drawing 145 milliamps. Sure looks like our problem. The next step is to disconnect the suspect device from the wire and isolate it. At the controller, I'll remove the solenoid and restore the wire path to the way it was before. Now I can see that the two-wire overcurrent message does not reappear when the bad device is not connected to the system. One last test to do, and that's to disconnect all of my wire path and connect only the device to the controller. With only the bad bicoder connected and no other wire, I can be 100% certain that the specific bicoder is the issue. One way to speed up this test out in the field is, once you get your benchmark reading at the controller, jump ahead. Maybe jump to the halfway point and measure there. If it's still reading high there, go out further until you need a backup. My meter that I used is an Armada Pro 95 milliamp clamp, but I also own a BK Precision 316 clamp. They're both good tools. But know that you won't find a milliamp clamp at your local hardware store. You can find them at your baseline distributor or an electrical supply house. Since I didn't have to break any splices to test devices, a milliamp clamp definitely pays for itself in splices and with less frustration.